This segment of Hack 5 is brought to you by Busted Tees. A couple of eyebrows. Um, how does, how is this, you know, as far as uh, in the eyes of the FAA and in the eyes of the FCC? Well, as far as legality goes, uh, because the, the USRP is really the only questionable one, and we've configured it to operate on 925.2 megahertz, which, which is within the 33 centimeter amateur radio band, and I'm a licensed ham radio operator, so that makes it legal as long as we transmit my call sign. All the other RF frequencies are public use, you know, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, uh, the, the Zigbee-like. Sure, all that 2.4 gigahertz right, ISM exactly. band, free for all. As far as the drone itself, the FAA has specific regulations for hobby, what they consider hobby grade UAVs. Under 400 foot of altitude at all times, uh, must be line of sight, and must have the ability for a manual takeover of the airplane at any time. As soon as you put this in the air and make money off of it, you're in violation of FAA rules and you have to get a permit. Okay, so this though has the capability to fly over 400 feet, obviously. Absolutely. Okay, uh, you probably could, now this is using an Arduino and some open source avionics software, right? Yes, yes. So you could probably automate the takeoff and landing-ish. Right. Well, actually, the, Take new, off, yes. the new version <laughs> of the DIY drones RG Pilot Mega uh -huh. has the ability to do automated takeoff and landings. So are you required to do manual takeoff and landings, or is it just that you have to have the capability to? We just have to, you just have to have the capability to intervene. I see. You have to have a, a, a fail-safe switch. To so you're actually standing there with some remote controls Absolutely. doing the sticks. Okay, and as far as the uh, line of sight is concerned, you've got a 4G on here, so you could say, go fly over that building miles and miles away and report back to me the telemetry for, via 4G, right? Absolutely. Yeah, but all of your tests, of course, have been in the, the legal uh, yes. operating areas, right? As tempting as it is to, to send it long distances and, and do real work with it, mm -hmm. um, you know, in, in the effort to restrict it to a proof of concept. We've taken so, so is that how you guys feel about this, as a proof of concept? What's the uh, the motivation behind this? Is it, is it demonstrating capabilities or, or what? Is it just be the hacker because you can? <laughs> yes, yeah, well, it was because a lot, of, a lot of folks told us we couldn't do it, um, which is, yeah, that's the wrong thing to say so to us. It's only impossible because somebody hasn't done it yet. So w what we really wanted to do was showcase that um, you don't necessarily have to be dropping O day every day uh, to be, uh, you know, a value to the community. That you can go out to these various uh, open source and, and you know off the shelf parts, and you can really put together something powerful uh, without having to have some advanced degree from MIT or, or you know one of these uh, high end schools or, or be a, a rocket scientist. You can really do something impactful and and give people things to work with uh, without having that uh, that background. Yeah, well, it's a great mashup of all of the existing technology in a way that has just never been done before. What are you guys planning on putting in this guy next? <laughs> well, uh, I think one of the things we're looking at is a three-axis camera, uh, something low light that we can uh, that we can steer uh, over the internet, of course, and stream back to us over the the big pipe. Um, that would be great. Uh, in addition, we're looking at things like uh, our own custom airframe, uh, or perhaps one of the larger glider-style airframes that are available. Uh, are, there, are there like kits to start doing that, or how, how do you even go about beginning to build your own airframe? Sure. I mean, well, this is not your typical like you know hacker uh, skill set here, but that's awesome. Sure. Well, I mean the maker community is getting into carbon fiber now. They have you know do-it-yourself carbon fiber kits. Um, you know that being said, there's also a lot of commercially available glider kits that are uh, that are being used right now by hobbyists. And they range in size from you know really small things to things that you could probably hang some significant weight, 12 foot, 15 foot wingspans. Um, so there's really a, a plethora of, of choices for us. Nice. Now tell me about the new control surface. So if you, you remember last year, we had a, a, a big black Pelican case with a touchscreen monitor and it was very big, very bulky, and it was the primary interface to the onboard payload computer. Okay. Um, just in testing alone, we found that to be very, you know, obtrusive and, and hard to use. Um, so what we've done is we've, we've built a new project box and we've incorporated a, a gumstick Overo for an operating system to effectively run as a router. Mm -hmm. And we've connected it to a, an Asus access point hotspot. Okay. So this is just a wireless client to this? Uh, via the, well, the, the XB gives us the connection to the airplane 
the wire the Wi-Fi hotspot allows you to take your laptop, your even your Android cell phone, connect to this wireless access point, and now you have access to the onboard payload of the, the airplane, and you can manipulate the tools that are available, and you don't have to have any you know special custom hardware or anything. And you just SSH in and can run all the tools Absolutely. right from there at Absolutely. your at your laptop like you're used to. Uh, does that mean that this control surface here could potentially run more than just this guy here? Maybe like a fleet of these guys. Um, you're limited in uh, USB connections. So for every USB connection, you could have another airplane that would, you could use to uh, access via this box. So what is it, 100 and however many? Well, 127, but there's still ways around that. Yeah, but I wouldn't know anything about trying to put 200 radios on a computer. If you're flying 127 airplanes. Uh, well, I'm just saying, I mean. <laughs> so yes, I mean, it's, it's entirely possible you could control multiple airplanes with this one box. You would have to have an operator for each one, obviously. Okay, so I, I got to ask about the, the media stuff because it's obviously blown up since last year. What has been the, the, the craziest thing that, uh, that's happened since this project kind of went public for you guys? Wow, just realizing that people are, are really interested in the project. Um, um, you know, last year it was great. We, we um, received a lot of attention from, from the peers and, and folks at DEF CON and then through your show, of course. Uh, and it was wonderful. We got a lot of great ideas um, and we, we still talk to a lot of the people that we, uh, that we talked to as a result of last year's show. Um, and this year it was just amazing to see the, the, the number of people that had considered this uh, last year and then are interested in it again this year. Uh, it's just exponential and, uh, and hopefully uh, it will result in some innovation. Yeah, so I, I got to know as you know, the people that watch the show and they get interested in this sort of stuff like taking, you know, taking hacking to the skies, uh, is this op have you open sourced everything? Can people go somewhere and find out how to do this themselves if they can, you know, pick up a, an old drone from an army surplus store or something? Well, everything we've, we've done is available on our website as much as we, we can provide um, you know, that we thought useful uh, sources and you know where we got various components bits parts pieces the actual assembly we kind of didn't really detail it in, in great detail because each implementation is going to be a little bit different a little bit unique and we're hoping that that you know we don't want just people to photocopy it we want people to go innovate and learn um, so yeah I mean as, as much as you can go build this it's all we I think we put it under GPL yeah, so well, I, I think that's beautiful because you know hacking the skies—it's just a 